How do you use the mixer brush in frequency separation? I'm going to show you now using the median method of frequency separation in Photoshop. Welcome everyone, I'm Josh Mills. This is video two of my two-part video series covering skin retouching using frequency separation. Today I'm going to show you how to use the mixer brush in Photoshop to retouch the skin tones on the low frequency layer. If you missed video one, I'm going to throw a link up here to that video and down below in the description along with a link to download my personal Photoshop actions. Now let's pick up where we left off. In video one, I showed you how to retouch textures and details on the high frequency layer. This is our image where we left off. You can see when I toggle the high texture working layer on and off, how much I've cleaned up the texture of the skin. Now we're going to finish frequency separation by smoothing out and correcting areas of color and tone on the low frequency layer. To do this, we're going to use the mixer brush tool. So what is the mixer brush tool? Well, it's a Photoshop tool that allows you to paint realistically by applying, pushing, and mixing paint just like you would with a brush on a canvas. Now I will show you how to use it. Okay, first, let's make sure that we have our low color working layer selected. Then we're going to go over and choose our mixer brush tool from the tools panel. It is located over here under the extra tools. If you right click on the three dots, you will find the mixer brush tool. If you do not see it there, click on edit toolbar. Let me go ahead and restore this. And then we will go ahead and scroll down until we find the mixer brush tool. It should be located right here where you see brush tool, pencil tool, color replacement tool, mixer brush tool. We then drag it over to the extra tools and hit done. We will now have the mixer brush. Next, let's check our settings. First, we want to make sure that our hardness is set at zero so we get nice soft edges on our brush. Next, we want to make sure that we have load brush after each stroke turned off. This will turn our brush into a blending brush. And we want the clean brush after each stroke turned on. That way we're not contaminating new areas with color from the previous stroke. If you are new to using the mixer brush, I suggest you start with these settings. A wet of 25%, a load of 50%, a mix of 50%, a flow of 25%, and we want the smoothing turned off. We also want to make sure that sample all layers is not checked. These settings will allow you to push and blend colors at a reasonably slow rate. Then as you get comfortable with using the mixer brush, you can increase your wet and your flow to make the color move around and blend quicker. Let me go ahead and show you the difference. So here I have the settings that I just recommended for you, the 25 wet, 50 load, 50 mix, 25 flow. Let me go ahead and make a stroke. You will see that it just barely pulls the red over into the white and then tapers off. Now, if I go ahead and increase the wet all the way up and leave the flow at the 25, let me make another stroke. What you see here is I've managed to pick up a lot more of the red color so I was able to make a much longer stroke. Let me go ahead and back that off. So now let's adjust the flow and make it 100%. Now I'm going to make a stroke. What you see here is basically it has moved a lot of color, but it dried up very quickly. And then finally, let's go ahead and make our wet 100% and our flow 100%. So here you saw that we had a lot of color and it was able to trail off very slowly. Once you get comfortable with the mixer brush, I would say that probably the best working settings I have found for my personal use is 50 across the board. So 50 wet, 50 load, 50 mix, and 50 flow. And this allows me good control, but allows me to move the color quickly and speed up my workflow. Okay, now I'm going to show you the two movements that I use when using the mixer brush on the low frequency layer. Let's zoom in over to the cheek. So as you can see, there are some uneven spots that were left from the removal of these blemishes. 
for these smaller discolorations, what I will do is take my brush, make my cursor a little bit larger than the area I want to blend, and I do a swirl. So I will drop down on the area and just swirl it. Let me zoom out a little bit. So basically, you can see these little light and dark areas of discoloration. I'm just going to blend them. with swirls. So you can see the changes when I toggle this high frequency layer on and off. Let me zoom back in. And now I'm going to do a couple of broad strokes back and forth just to even those out. And when I toggle this on and off, you can see how well those little areas have blended in. Let's move on down here and let me show you another thing. I like to use strokes to move color into an area. So if I want to get rid of this dark area right here, I'm gonna drop my cursor down into the light area and drag the color over the dark. And then I'm gonna come at it from the opposite direction. So I'm gonna come in from both sides to blend that out. So now when I toggle this on and off, you can see how I've gotten rid of that dark area and I've managed to pull a little bit of dark in there. So. Let's move it back. There we go. One of the uses I found for pushing color like that is actually removing the darkness under eyes. So if I make my cursor very large, I can go right here to the top of the cheek where we have the brightness, and I can push that brightness up into that dark area under the eye to brighten it up and make those dark circles go away. Once I've pushed the color up there, I might go back and forth just a couple of slow strokes just to blend it in a little bit better. So let's go to the other side and do the same. So basically those are the movements I use for the mixer brush. There's the swirl for evening out a single point and then there is the stroke for moving color into another area and blending it out. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna fast forward as I finish working on the low layer with the mixer brush. I'll meet y'all on the backside so we can wrap this up. Okay, everyone, I've finished cleaning up the skin tones and colors on the low frequency layer with the mixer brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the before and after of that. So I come over here and turn the visibility of the low working layer on and off. You can see how much I've cleaned up those underlying tones and just smoothed her face and skin. So now if I go ahead and turn off the entire frequency separation group, you can see the before and after. This is before and this is after. Well, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and tell me about it. If you haven't already checked out video one of this frequency separation series, go ahead, I will put it in the link up below so you can check that out. You may also want to hit that subscribe button so when I upload new content, you'll be notified. I hope you all have a wonderful day.